Okay, everybody, welcome. Thank you for joining us this morning, this afternoon, um, wherever in the world you are. Um, I'm going to hand over to Stephen, um, who can start the Discover Nature with Tobago webinar. Over to you, Stephen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, hello, welcome to everyone. Um, I hope you're all keeping well and safe. Um, thank you very much for joining us, uh, Tobago, the beautiful island of Tobago, um, for this the first in a series of um, Discover Tobago um, webinars. Um, this first one is focused very much on nature, and I've got uh, three fantastic guests um, with me. Um, after I do a little short introduction to uh, what's happening in Tobago with regards to the protocols and some, some new exciting changes to the island, um, I'm going to introduce or uh, show a presentation from um, Roy and Ian um, from Corbin Local Wildlife Park with their amazing um, research and, and well, I'm not going to give it away, it will surprise us as they will talk about it um, during the presentation and you can ask them some questions about the animals in Tobago. Um, after them, we will have Steve Felgate, uh, who owns the gorgeous Castara Retreats in Tobago. Um, I'll show you very shortly on the map where Castara Retreats is and, and how wonderful and beautiful that property is. Um, Steve will obviously elaborate on that when his presentation comes through. And then we will finish off with Josanne uh, Shepherd from Shepherd's Inn. Again, another gorgeous sort of property down on another part of Tobago. Um, again, I'll show you that on the map as well as the presentation proceeds. So um, these are the fantastic guests. I've got an amazing, lovely gift. I know it's a gift box prize, but the stuff that we've got in there is, is really exciting. Um, and so we've got a lovely little prize, which we'll draw at the, uh, after the presentations. Um, and so, yeah, one little, little tidbit. We do have some, I do have a lot of video footage in this presentation. Um, if you have any issues with the video sound not coming through or it's stuttering, don't worry, just, just bear with it and watch as much as you can, because what I will do tomorrow, I'll share links to all the footage that you see, that you'll see, or try and see today. So, you, you know, you will get a chance to see it. So don't worry too much about it. Hopefully it will all flow nicely. I've boosted my Wi-Fi and uh, away we go. <laughs> um, so, yes, I shall begin with, oh, sorry, I forgot to say, uh, I'm going to begin and end with a short video. The whole point of this video is just to give you a little bit of a taster and get you into the mood of Tobago. For all those who haven't seen a presentation on Tobago or actually visited Tobago, this is what Tobago is kind of all about. It's only when I go abroad and I see what is out there and I come back and I measure against what is here, there is no comparison to beauty. Some writings of our history, it is said that Christopher Columbus called it Bella Fauna, meaning beautifully formed. Natural, beautiful, peaceful. <laughs> yes. I get emotional. That's why I'm here. <laughs> One of the fascinating things about nature, there is always something new, and especially in the tropics where there's such wide diversity, persons can experience and have the awe associated with some of the beaches we have, aquatic life we have, some of the fascinating birds we have within a day, within a short period of time. You have the Caribbean Sea on one side, you have the Atlantic Ocean on the other side. On our doorstep, a fringe reef that wraps around the entire area. You have this huge amount of biodiversity and uh, you know, liveliness of the entire water that surrounds the island. We also do bioluminescent nighttime tours, which are like uh, an escape into the deep, dark secrets of this you know, glowing phenomenon. It's like this almost cosmic effect. It's just something to be seen. I know everybody in the village. <laughs> and everybody know me. That is the nice thing about here. 
Tobago as used to the extended family. There was always a grandmother, aunt, or uncle. There was always love. We eat and we drink, we laugh, and everything together. Tobago, in one word to me, beautiful. Beautiful place to live. It gives me great pleasure to be in Tobago and do what I do. The sunsets here are probably bar none, some of the nicest I've seen. I would describe Tobago as one of the clean, serene, and the best place that anyone could come. Be easy, be happy, and have a good time. There is nothing to compare to. This little dot called Tobago exists, and come visit. Yes, 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 yes. I really want to <laughs> want to be there now, but hey, you know what? We're here, we're where we're at. Hopefully that all flowed nicely for you guys and you saw as much as you could see in that in that video. Um, but as I said, at the very end, I'm gonna share some tomorrow night. Tomorrow you'll get an email with a, a link to watch it and listen to that if any of that didn't come through. So where are where is sorry Tobago? I was gonna say our uh, Trinidad and Tobago sure you guys are fully aware that we are the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, a two island state, right at the very bottom, hope you can see my pointer here, right at the very bottom of the crest of Caribbean islands. Um, our focus today is very much on the beautiful island of Tobago though. Yeah, We actually sit underneath the hurricane belt just for, just for your information so we don't get troubled by them on an annual basis and we are very much linked, as you can see there's a mountain range that runs right across um, South America and it actually goes across northern Trinidad and then into Tobago. So we actually very, very much linked with a lot of things down in South America. But just as an introduction, just to, to, as people often say, well, where are the islands? Or where is Tobago? We're right at the very bottom of this crest of Caribbean islands. Now, protocols. All this information is um, as up to date and as new as I have found them, um, as I've collated them. But just so you guys are fully aware, uh, the borders into Trinidad and Tobago are open. But the flights, all the flights are only going into Trinidad at the present moment in time. Um, and then if people do, and then there are domestic services down to Tobago. Um, fully vaccinated nationals or non-nationals can enter through um, Trinidad and Tobago, obviously going down into Tobago. And your, your second vaccination must have been at least 14 days, okay, in advance before you before you travel. Um, so yeah, that's that's with regards to vaccination. Unvaccinated nationals, so people from Trinidad and Tobago, can still go into Trinidad, but they have to only fly directly into Trinidad, and they do will have to um, quarantine for 14 days. Um, for your purposes, obviously you're thinking more about the tourism element, um, unvaccinated non-nationals are not permitted into Trinidad and Tobago at this present moment in time. Um, and when they are, uh, when they will be, um, it, uh, all, that, all visitors must have had uh, a 72 hour in advance negative PCR test. So this is very much in line with a lot of destinations that you guys are probably already selling. Um, but these are the protocols, the latest, most up to date protocols with regards to inoculation and coming into Tobago. Uh, sorry, coming to Trinidad and Tobago. Now, all visitors, be it to nationals or um, non nationals, have to fill in an online pass, a TT travel, I say TT, I keep saying TT travel, it's a T travel pass, um, which can be found via uh, tobagobeyond.com and at the very top of that page is a travel ad advisory update page and the link to T travel pass is in there. Now with regards to me just mentioning tra the travel advisory update page, all the information I've just told you, the most up-to-date information um, is on this page, is on that linked page. Okay, so this is where I've collated that information from and then just a little step into the T travel pass um, it is very, very straightforward. You click on whether you're national or non-national. For you guys, most of it, mostly it will be non-nationals and hopefully fully vaccinated. And then it will give you um, exactly what you require, the 72 hours. Or as that changes, um, as it possibly might do, you might not need um, um, a, a negative PCR. But this is where you will get the most up-to-date information. I hope that all makes, makes sense. But if it doesn't, just go to tobagobeyond.com and click on the travel advisory update at the very top of the page. All right, hopefully that bit is clear enough. The final thing I was asked, I've been asked a couple of times um, 
to uh, is uh, regarding um, negative PCR tests before you return to your destination. So for the UK, you need a, a, a negative PCR test. Um, so we do have, this is brand new information. I only received this two days ago, or yesterday, I think it was two days ago. Um, we actually have uh, three private labs on Tobago um, and they will give you results within 48 hours. You just book it online or you call them on the, on the hotline and you book and you pre-book depending on when you require your negative PCR test. And currently the cost is 700 TT dollars, which is about 74 pounds. Um, I can't convert it into US dollars. So I'm not too sure about the exchange rate at the present moment in time, but that just gives you a little bit of an idea that we can actually do that. Um, we can actually, you can actually get some uh, PCR tests in Tobago and you don't have to um, go to uh, Trinidad for, for your PCR tests. So this is, as I said, the most up-to-date information and all that you can find via tobagobeyond.com and the travel advisory at the top. Now, once we are off the red list, uh, just to take a step back, yes, Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago are currently on the red list for the UK, um, UK government. Um, and I will just add to that, um, the, the main reason is because of Trinidad, believe it or not, um, because the population there is much larger. The rates um, in comparison uh, between Trinidad and Tobago of cases is 2% on Tobago. So that will just give you an idea. If Tobago was a separate country, it wouldn't be on any red, red list because of the number of cases in Tobago. But as I said at the very beginning, we are the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, so we're all in it together. Um, we are on the red list, but once we are off the red list as a country, um, from the UK side of things, British Airways and Virgin Atlantic um, will be flying. They've, they've told us several times they do intend to return on their scheduled services. And Virgin um, fly out of Heathrow once a week over the summer months or nowish, and then it goes to a twice a week over the winter months. And British Airways fly out of Gatwick twice a week year round. Both of those services stop in Antigua, uh, but pass passengers don't disembark. They stay on the aircraft and uh, go through to Tobago. British Airways, British Airways also fly um, out of Gatwick five times a week to Trinidad, directly to Trinidad, Port Spain. And if people did want to travel that way, um, they can connect down with Caribbean Air Airways or Airlines, sorry, um, straight down to Tobago. Um, and then, I mean, currently Caribbean Airlines are only flying, I think, two or three times a day. Um, but when things are back to normal, I, uh, I believe, I, I think the, the, my, my, my Caribbean, my Tobago um, guests can, can reconfirm, but I think the service is up to like nine or 10 times a day. So it's practically a bus service between Trinidad and Tobago when times are normal. So that's obviously what uh, they'll be pushing for um, once the borders are open and people can travel again freely. So that's getting to the island. The newest news with regards to as we're talking about traveling, is that um, in January of this year, um, the government of Trinidad and Tobago announced that Tobago will be getting a brand new uh, airport, which we're very, 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 very excited about. A brand new runway, um, which would uh, um, obviously, as you, can say, as you can see, accommodates a much larger aircraft, which is um, um, more interesting for us with regards to the number of tourists that can come to our gorgeous island. A new terminal, duty-free, basically it's bringing us up to date um, to other airports around the world, VIP lounges, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this was announced in January, um, and they actually broke ground in January. So it is a project which is going ahead at the present moment in time um, with the expected uh, completion at the end of next year. It's a two-year project and uh, expected to complete at the end of 2020, 2022. So really exciting news um, for people visiting and getting to Tobago once you arrive. Now, the island itself. Um, I will be quite brief with this element because my next, the next element is going to be Corbin Wildlife Park, as you can see right slap in the centre there where number six is, that's where they are positioned. You're then going to be followed up by Castara Retreats, which are up here on this northern Caribbean coast, and then we will go to Shepherd's Inn, which is down in the southern western um, part of the island. Now I'll start down on the southern western part of the island, um, because down in this, this whole section here, it's probably where you'll find probably 80 to 90 percent of your accommodation, your nightlife, bars, restaurants, uh, that sort of that sort of element. So down in this area here, this is Crown Point. So this is where you really need to be on a Friday or Saturday night because that's where it's most lively. Um, but also down here, just where you see number two at the edge there is Pigeon Point Heritage Park. And that's where if you people want to do your kite surfing, your windsurfing, those sort of adventurous um, water sports and those sort of activities, as well as as well as the more genteel stand-up paddleboarding and kayaking, 
that's all around in that area and it's a beautiful little heritage it's a beautiful little park to visit on a, as a day as a day trip anyway now i'm just pointing i hope you can see my little arrow here this little area here is called the bonacord lagoon now if you saw the video that was just shown you'll see you saw that there was a nighttime element called the bioluminescence experience now that actually happens that's the bonacord lagoon and that's where that actually happens in that little area here so let me travel up the island here. Along this area, uh, you will see where my arrow is, you'll find there's lots of accommodation. As I said, all down here is where the majority of accommodation is. But also, these will be the beaches where you'll have turtles nesting um, throughout the year. So again, another little natural attraction that Tobago has to offer. But then we move away from that southwest area and we go up to this northern Caribbean coast. That's where you'll find Cascara and Palé Tuvier, which are two small, pristine, authentic, fishing villages. You will see shortly when the Castara presentation um, um, it, it happens, you will see that it is unspot. There's no major development up in that area. And both of those beautiful little villages are intersected by Englishman's Bay, Bloody Bay, which are your perfect sort of Robinson Crusoe beaches. Yeah, they've got, they've got like one little restaurant and some, some facilities on there. And that is it. Perfect to get away from it all. So that gives you a little bit of an idea about this northern coast. This circle indicates the UNESCO Man and Biosphere designation. So again, this is something that's new, that was awarded to Tobago, the island of Tobago, I think it was in the summer of last year. Now I'm sure all of you have heard of the UNESCO listings, but even I, I mean, you, I'm not sure all of you would have heard of the Man and the Biosphere designation. And what that focuses on is our three key ish, areas, um, village, villages and village life, um, recycling efforts, water retention, those sort of, um, sort of programs within the villages. Um, so villages like Castara, Palo Tuvier, up here is Charlottesville, Speyside is up here, Roxburgh, so all these gorgeous, beautiful little villages with very little in the way of development, very natural experiences. Um, um, that's, that's number one. Number two is um, coral preservation and replanting efforts, particularly in the Charlottesville area around here. Um, so yes, they do coral replanting and they do lots of research on the coral. And the third element is this sort of emerald spine of the island, which is the Main Ridge Forest Reserve. Yeah, the oldest protected rainforest in the Western Hemisphere. Fantastic area for, for nature lovers, people interested in, in walks, uh, bird watching, even on the peripheries, there's mountain biking trails, um, absolutely gorgeous, very, very beautiful. Now, um, just to give you a, the final tidbits before we move on to, to Corbin, um, on that video, there was the Argyle Falls, um, if anyone spotted that, which is a three-tiered beautiful fall. Now Tobago is blessed with about six different waterfalls that you can actually access when you go there. Absolutely gorgeous, very, very natural. Also, we have some fantastic, I mentioned Charlottesville, we've got amazing diver sites around this northern area here and over on this east side, east side around Space Side, amazing dive sites around there, as well as down on this um, southwestern side as well. So, we cover um, a load, a large spectrum of different activities if people want those sort of activities, the waterside, snorkeling, bird watching, uh, turtle watching, very, very natural, very, very authentic. Now, that's a nice little picture. I hope you understand that you've got a, a nice little vibe of the key selling points of Tobago. I, I could go on for about an hour just talking about the island and the key things that happen on the island, but I'm sure what you want to do is hear from some of the other people, a couple of the properties. One little tip before you hear Corbin and you'll see Corbin and Castara and Shepherds Inn. Castara and Shepherds Inn are the last two properties I've actually, I actually stayed in. I was there a couple of years ago and I stayed in both of these properties. And what they give me are the two distinct sides of Tobago. Close to nature, up at Castara, peaceful, tranquil, quiet, and still, um, uh, uh, again, close to nature as well because we have nature everywhere. But I had the, the verve of being so close to a bit of nightlife, and all the choices of restaurants, amazing restaurants and dining down in this southern western area here. So yeah, hopefully that gives you all a, a fantastic picture. Um, I'll be here till the end, so if there are any questions, please put them in the, in the question section. But now I'm going to transition on to Corbin's local wildlife park. There's a short um, video where he's doing a little trail, a little tour around the park. Hopefully you can all hear it, and um, again, if you have any questions, Please put them in the chat afterwards. Thank you. Oh. 
the folks we have entered Corbin Local Wildlife Park. If you notice the surroundings here, it's very, very, very interesting. It's very cool, very forest like. Why? Because we are in secondary forest. So you will get a forest experience at Corbin Local Wildlife Park. Follow me as we journey further in. This is our first enclosure. If you look with me, you would see we have the parrots in here. We have the coquico. Now at Corbin Local Wildlife Park, we only focus on local animals. So animals that you would find in Tobago. Okay guys, so we are focusing on Tobago animals. So if you look with me again, you would see we have the orange wing Amazon parrots. We have the Chakalaka, Rupert Vented Chakalaka, local coffee crow, and also that bird is one of our national birds. So it's a very important bird here on the island of Tobago. You don't find it in Trinidad, which is very, very unique. You only find it in Tobago. So as we move on, guys, as we journey further into Corbin Local Wildlife Park, I will give you an idea of what takes place here at Corbin Local Wildlife Park. So this is our school room. We focus on the kids here when we have the schools. If you look, you would see we have a lot of space here where we can house the kids. So when we have the schools in, we give the students lectures here. And there's an area big enough for the kids to sit and have lunch, snacks. If you want to come in and spend half your day, your day here, you have some place to sit and observe what takes place in our surroundings here. Right guys, so this is looking out from the school room. There's a pond under us where we would house damaged caimans. So we have a, a large group of caimans here. But we also would take in, we also would take in damaged ones and we keep them here until they are healed and then we put them back in the forest. So before I go further, I must tell you guys what we do at Corbin Local Wildlife Park. Now we are into conservation. Our main goal here is not to really showcase the animals, but to rehabilitate damaged animals, sick animals, and also unwanted pets. So here at Corbin Local Wildlife Park, we take in all the local animals that we can take in from folks that may have them as pets. So what we do, we try to get these animals trained to hunt again and to survive in the wild, and we eventually release them. So guys, at Corbin Local Wildlife Park, we also focus on our breeding and releasing. So what we do here at Corbin Local Wildlife Park, we try our best to get all the local animals breeding and reintroduce them back into the forest. So most of the animals we have here, we have a very successful breeding program that takes place at Corbin Local Wildlife Park. Okay guys, and we also want to say we encourage volunteers so we have boarding for volunteers we have rooms for volunteers to stay here at the park whenever they choose to come so we have foreigners that would come we have locals that would come we encourage it so that would help with our program here with feeding the animals helping to clean the parts and so forth so guys if you feel free to come if you have the time come we would accept you at Corbin Local Wildlife Park in our volunteer program. Now, if you look with me again, guys, here we have an agouti. Now, this is part of what we do at Corbin Local Wildlife Park. Now, if you look close with me, you would see where it's damaged. Okay, guys, so it has a damaged leg. So, as we speak, it 
it's moving around on three legs so one was cut off i don't know how but this guy was sent to us from the police they took it from someone that had it in a very bad condition and it ended up at Corbin local wildlife park so what we are doing we are nursing it back to perfect health it would not be able to go back to the wild so we're gonna keep it here as a breeder so this would eventually be one of the animals that we will be breeding here the babies go back to the wild but this damaged one stays at Corbin local wildlife park so guys walk with me again So at Corbin Local Wildlife Park, we also do a lot of hiking here. So folks will come in and we take them into the forest if they choose to. So we have two hikes. One is an hour and a half and the other one is five hours. So whichever one you can manage, you will alert us. We prepare for it and you come in and we take you on those hikes. Right? So... The tour that we give here at Corbin Local Wildlife Park, it's approximately an hour and a half walking around. Taking your time like we are doing here now. And we go right through the park and see all the animals. We come back, we sit in the schoolroom, breeze off a bit, have some fun, chat a bit on how the tour was, if you enjoyed it. So guys, we are now entering the enclosure that house the possums. So we have possums here that have been breeding for the last three to four years. So I'll just show you a young male that we house here for breeding. All right, so they are very aggressive animals, but no pain any mind. He just showing you that he we are in his territory all right guys so that's our possums or oh, one of our possums young male that's coming up for breeding you have two or three girls to deal with Yeah. Okay guys, so at the iguana enclosure, we have two large iguanas in here, they've recently laid eggs, so we're hoping that those eggs are fertile so we can have babies, so this is one of the females, if you look close you see she's a pretty he healthy girl, just laid eggs and she's still looking in very good condition, alright guys, so this is our green iguana. It's a local del delicacy. We try to discourage people from eating the animals because the each animal have, have an important role to play in the forest here. So we need these animals to survive so that they can continue doing a very wonderful job for the environment. Okay guys, so that's it on the iguanas for now. So they love to swim, so I'm gonna put it back in the pond where it was. Yeah, disappears there so that's it on the bonus for now okay guys so we are at our snake enclosure so in Tobago we have this boa it's one of the largest species of snakes on the island these guys can grow to approximately 14 feet fully grown now at Corbin local we get calls every day or almost every day on snakes so we have been rescuing snakes all over the island for the last, what, three to four years. So folks would call us if there's a snake in their house, in their car, on a tree close by, under the house. Once it's somewhere where they are not comfortable with it being there, we have, encouraging, we have been encouraging people not to kill them. Call us and we would come and secure the animal and take it somewhere safe. So if by chance, some people can't resist damaging them. We get one that's damaged. We would bring them in here, nurture them, and get them back to the wild. So this one came in today as we speak. It has one eye damage. So far, what, what we can see, 
a few ticks on it. So we're going to clean him up, tend to that eye. And it's a pretty healthy animal still. And hoping that we'll be able to release him back within a month or so. Okay guys, so at Corbin Local you get this experience. Now I got it today and I can do this with it. If you notice I'm not holding it. Like grabbing on it, it's on me. I could put it around my shoulders. Because I've been doing this for years, so it comes natural. So we don't encourage people to try stunts like these at home. These animals do bite. Okay guys. But once you handle them with care and very gentle, the animal would not be aggressive towards you. Okay, so that's it for now, guys. And that, I hope you can still hear me, that is uh, just a little taster of the Cole Corbin's local wildlife park. Um, Sarah. Yes, we've got just a couple of questions. Um, Selena's asked, um, does Corbin come from the fish name? Roy. Or yes, I'm, here, I'm hearing you. Um, I'm not too sure where it came from. My my, my mom gave me that name. <laughs> I'm not too. I think she got it from her father. I don't know where he got it from. <laughs> okay, and um, we've got another question: Are snakes anywhere on the island? Um, and are they dangerous? We have no venomous snakes on the island, and snakes are all over the island. Okay, perfect. And um, the rest of the questions are more generic to Tobago that we've got in as, um, as, as, a, as a general. So unless anybody's got any more questions um, for Corbin Local Wildlife. Um, which can, I just add, can I just add that to the snake thing? Um, I have been, I've been fortunate. I've been to Tobago maybe 20 times over the last sort of five, six years. And the only place I've ever seen snakes is at Corbin's Local Wildlife. So yes, the, as... as uh, I just wanted to add that so people don't think that there's there's snakes crossing the streets and <laughs> partying <laughs> partying everywhere else everyone wants to be. But uh, yeah, you know, as 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 he's pointed out, as I've already pointed out, the island is me, very me, very lush. Let me add a, a bit more to that. Our snakes here are pretty shy, so very yeah. rare you come in contact with our snakes here. Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. So that's it from me for the questions um, so far. We may get more towards the end. So thank right, you, guys. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Sarah. And thank You're you, welcome. Ian. And thank you, Roy. Um, we will move on now um, to the first property. And as I pointed out, this property, as if you remember the map, is uh, halfway up the map. Um, this is Castara Retreats up in the beautiful village of Castara. Um, again, this is a, a, a short video, um, but it takes you around the island. Um, if Steve can unmute and get himself prepared and say that he's available, I will, when he says something, I will start the... Hello, Steve, can you Hello. hear me? Yeah. You're there. Yeah. Fabulous. Great. Yeah. Okay. okay, I shall start the presentation now. Hello, everybody. Uh, really lovely to have this opportunity to talk to you all. I don't know how many different time zones we're in, but I'm in Wales at the moment. Really sorry, Steve. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Steve. Um, your what? Well, something's happening on your mic. Um, is there a way to to? Sorry. Yeah, you're you're. For me, you're very very muffled. I, uh, Sarah, could you clarify whether you, you can hear Steve clearly? Yeah, I think just turn your volume up and sit a little bit close to the speaker. Okay. Oh. Okay. And the, the music. Yeah. The music's very high at my end, um, Stephen. All right, I'll turn the music down. I'll start. I'll start the video again. I'll start the whole thing again. Hello, everybody. Really nice to have this opportunity to talk with you. Um, over the next 
six or seven minutes, I want to introduce you to the Star Repeats, our accommodation uh, for the restaurant in Nova Studio. Um, give you a picture of how things are there and the sort of place you would be sending your guests to. I also uh, will say a little bit about the beach, which is just below our eco resort, as you can see from this slide just coming up. And you'll see that we have uh, 17 accommodations, uh, very much designed with wood and living in the landscape as the vibe. So they're very open and you'll see more on that later. They all have fabulous views of the ocean and um, they're very open to the breezes. Uh, the bedrooms all have air conditioning and outside they all have hammock systems and outdoor showers as well as um, indoor showers. So um, we discovered Castara 25 years ago and what you've seen so far on the earlier presentations is all absolutely true. Uh, of Castara, Castara retreats. I mean, it's a living in the landscape experience, nature's all around you, the beach is just below you, and the village of Castara itself is just a really friendly, laid back and welcoming place. We're a family run business, uh, myself and my daughter uh, are running uh, things in the UK. And the other half of our family is a local family called Derek and uh, Janelle Lopez, and you'll meet Derek later, although he calls himself porridge. He's porridge on our website, he's porridge to government ministers, he's porridge to all of our guests, and he's uh, one of many people who have local nicknames. Um, what I'm really pleased about Castara is that whilst there's access to the beach and nature in the village, quality is really at the heart of what we do, simplicity, uh, naturalness, but our soft furnishings, our equipment, uh, our kitchens are all, each accommodation is self-catering. So there's really good quality um, kitchens and kitchen equipment. The, the bed linen, the mosquito nets, the outdoor furniture, the hammocks, we've sourced really good things and uh, to make sure that standards are maintained to a really good level. You're just looking at an outside shower. Uh, these are really popular for when you come up off the beach to wash down uh, before maybe getting ready for supper that evening. And uh, as you've seen in uh, all the presentations so far, the views are really stunning. That's a rainforest tree just there. It too has an iguana living in it. Uh, it's a four foot green iguana. Last time I was there and you see that from your deck. Um, we have a really friendly team at Castar Retreats and they've grown with us and we've grown with them. I mean, they've taught me a lot, like to say, how are you and good morning before I start jumping into business with them all. And they've learned from me that guests staying at Castar Retreats have really high expectations before they come and the importance of main, maintaining quality and standards. And um, we're famous in that way for a friendly team a uh, fabulous quality place to stay, and um, uh, nothing is too much trouble for the team with our guests. And so there's a, there's a love vibe, basically. And you'll pick up on that when you go down into the village, and I'll say more on that in a little while. But many of our guests say when they go down in the village and they exchange viewpoints on the world, they come back feeling they learned more about how to live a happy life. Uh, you're seeing here our yoga studio and wellness center. The views are as they are everywhere else. Here there's a daily yoga session. Um, it's uh, 10 pounds or 11 US dollars. Um, it's every day at nine o'clock. It's a really beautiful session. Our teacher, who you'll see in a moment, Judah, uh, is a really experienced teacher and has a lovely spirit with her. And I wish she was speaking in this video because she's a uh, a really beautiful personality. Um, restaurant too, you'll see a slide or two in a little while on the restaurant, but it looks a bit like this yoga studio with fabulous views. Uh, it's called Caribbean Kitchen, uh, Caribbean fusion food. And um, again, it has a really lovely reputation for meeting other guests, having good food, hanging out. There's lovely cocktails, happy hour, 
and um, fish fresh from the bay every day. I'm just going to pause a moment to take in where Tudor's got to with her yoga. Um, she, she learned with her in a yoga community on Trinidad and we're very closely associated with them and they often come over and have yoga retreats at Kastara retreats. Um, I think that's enough on the accommodations, except to say that all 17, which you saw in that slide a while ago, are set in two acres of tropical gardens. So when you walk down to the beach, it's all very close. And um, the beach is five minutes away. You walk through the gardens, you see hummingbirds. If you're lucky, you see an iguana. Many of our guests see an agouti. Um, the beach is, uh, we walk through a neighbor's piece of land and uh, down onto the beach with her permission. And then she rents you uh, a sunbed on the beach. So there's all these sort of reciprocal relationships going on with the village. This is the beach. It's uh, gorgeous. Uh, on the right, that col colorful wood is the Cass Creole Bar. You can get yourself lunch there or a cold beer. The swimming is amazing. Um, this, these are the guys uh, in a moment. Yeah, they're pulling the same nets every day. They pull in fish. There's a whole system that our guests get involved with. Some of them help haul in the same fishing. Um, there's lifeguards on the beach. The swimming's very safe, very good quality. Um, we have a really amazing coral reef. And uh, we're involved in protecting that reef. And we've uh, contributed enormously to a three-year program of protection and monitoring the beach. You're getting some close-ups of the accommodation now. This is treetops, uh, looking through the mango tree to the beach. This is the restaurant, that's the bar. We have another uh, area for the restaurant, very similar open, but um, not in the bar area. Um, sunsets, we're on the Caribbean coast. Uh, see beautiful sunsets. This accommodation you're looking at now is coast hangers. So fantastic views of the beach, fantastic sunsets every day. This is just typical of all the accommodations. Some are smaller and less expensive. Some are a bit bigger, but they all have great views, great quality equipment. Uh, Stephen loves this photo with a red hair. And about to hear now from Porridge, our local manager. My name is Derek Lopez, better known as Porridge. I'm the manager of Castava Retreat. I've been working here for 20 years. Well, guys, I'm saying this to you, I miss you all. I wish you guys were here in Tobago with us right now. But this pandemic has messed all of us up. But I'm just letting you know that we still have Castara here for you. Castara, which is so beautiful, and we will keep it beautiful till you come again. So I want you to know where we still have the Wednesday night drumming on the small beach. We have the Thursday night bonfire on the big beach, which everybody comes out and have a nice party. And after that, you know, well, after party, you go to bed and you wake up in the morning and then you head for the coffee shop. And that's where you go and get your breakfast. And after having your lovely breakfast, you think about having a swim in the waterfall, which is 10 minutes walk up the water waterfall from Castara village. And I want you guys to know that we really miss you all. So after this pandemic is over, I want you all to pack your bag, pack your suitcase and get your passport and head for the airport and head for Tobago. This is the place where you have to be at Castara Retreat in Tobago. That's fantastic. I think there's still a little bit left, but that's it. Hello, can you all hear me? Yeah. Steve, Steve, yep. you're still there. Yep. Excellent. That's that was yeah, that was wonderful. Um just I will just add something before Sarah you, you come back with any questions. Um if any of you guys want to see Judah um actually do a, 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 she she actually does a, a short sort of a five minute um training um introduction to yoga. Um, if you go to Travel Weekly Recovery Hub, 
the Travel Weekly Recovery Hub, there's a there's a video on there on the Tobago, there's a Tobago page with loads of information, um, uh, most up to date information about the recovery, the various things that we've been doing over the last couple of years. Um, and there's also some video content on there. And one of the videos is Judah um, just showing you guys uh, just a nice little starter. So um, just thought I'd add that before before I lose the track on that. But anyway, sorry, Sarah. Questions. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes. Um, which tour operators or bed banks um, sell Costara? Um, is this a question for you, Stephen? Or well, <laughs> well it, it, uh, it, I, th I think uh, you were talking for the travel agents' point of view. They're looking at um, some B two B ones, which will probably be uh, Carib tours do it um bed banks i'm not re i'm not 100 there are several i know that i, I believe um oh God, what's my brain thinking um what's the donata uh gold medal i believe i think gold medal do do um offer rooms um but you know what i can follow up I, what i'll do on the on the follow-up email tomorrow i'll list um two or three um, options for travel agents to to find for star retreats, but definitely um, Carib tours are, are one of them. Um, but I'll I'll add a list uh, on the on the email tomorrow. Super. What are the meal plans, please, Steve? Um, we only do meal plans when people request in advance, and uh, that's not a problem. Uh, some people want an all in price, and we work that out with them. It depends if they want lunch and dinner or just. Uh, dinner in the evening. Uh, we don't do breakfast because the apartments are so well um, accommodated that people either do their own breakfast or they go down into the village, as Porridge said, and go to the uh, to the coffee shop uh, and mix in with local people and order a nice breakfast there. We're very big on encouraging people into the village and that you know, it, th th there's a benefit for our guests and for us because the village then really like us. And when our guests are in the village, they get a really, really nice welcome. So we don't try and keep everything for ourselves. Um, but a meal plan for the restaurant, I guess, if you were having um, a three course meal in the evening, it would be like 25, 30 US dollars uh, or 25, 30 British pounds, you know, with exchange rate adjustments. Okay, super. Do you accept children? Yeah, children love it. Um, some of the accommodations are more suitable than, than others. We, the only thing we say uh, in terms of people is, is it's not great for people who have difficulty walking because we are on the side of a hill. So the paths down to the beach are, you know, quite steep and uh, all got handrails, blah, blah, blah. But somebody has difficult walking around uh, it's not great, but kids love the gardens. They love running around the footpaths. They love going to the beach. And um, we have two bedroom accommodations as well as one bedroom accommodations. Okay, super. Um, Beverly's asked, how many people in total can, can you accommodate if, for example, for, for a retreat, if it's a group booking? If it's a group booking, the biggest one we, well, our maximum is 42. And... Um, uh, so if we're doing a wedding, we're full and then people are also sometimes dotted around the village as well. And we get lots of yoga retreats and different sorts of retreats from somewhere between eight and 25 people. Uh, but the biggest yoga retreat was 42. OK, super. Um, do you do any beverage packages? No. Or is it just self-catering? It, it basically self-catering. I mean, we'll... We'll listen and do anything we can for people, but um, no, that's not not the way we normally do things. Okay, is um Castara located on the Caribbean Sea? Yep. So that sunset, um, the backdrop uh, to me talking, is the Caribbean side of the island, and we get great sunsets. Super. Um, do you own Castara? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. That's, that was one of the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Super. That's um, that's all the questions done. Um, we've got a question again about operators from Canada, USA, but Stephen's already advised that he's going to look into that um, and tell you about that. And um, for example, the um, the Canadian and the um, US market, they 
they do have the means to be able to book directly. Is that something that you would arrange? Do you have a, you know, could they book directly with you? Yeah, most of our bookings, probably 70% of them are direct. So we have got a fabulous website. I mean, really, it's exceptional with information. Uh, uh, it takes, it's all automated reservations, automatic um, uh, payment systems. And so agents, if they contact us direct, uh, we agree the terms with them, it's got simple packages, uh, don't usually have any issues about that. And um, they can book direct with us. And that actually, you get a slightly more personal tailored um, service then because it's um, Porridge, our manager, he has a, an airport um, taxi service that's his business under our umbrella, which is really nice for him. And it means you're picked up by one of Porridge's team. They stop at a supermarket on the way over. They know which accommodation you're in. Uh, you're met by Porridge and shown in. So you get a slightly more personal uh, attention than if you book through a tour operator who always have their own arrangements about taxis and that sort of thing. Okay. And um, would you recommend car hire from your location? Would we recommend? Car hire. Say that again? Car hire. Would you would, yeah, car hire. Would you recommend car, car hire? hire. Um, well, hmm, why I'm pausing is we're so much in the habit, aren't we? We go on holiday for a week or two and we hire a car. But actually, one of the problems if you're at Castara Retreats, if you've got a car sat there, you go out every day. And the best place to be really <laughs> is Castara Village. And so we, we really do encourage guests to visit other places and do various tours. But you can hire a car by a day or two days in the village itself if you want to save a little bit of cost in that way. And um, it's really important to not miss out the, the experience, not just the Kastar retreats, but the village itself. There's a really good vibe in the village. And then porridge, you know, people that want to do a tour, um, you know, a driver, a nice car can be organized and go out for the day or they can hire a car for the day. So, um, you know, if you otherwise you want to book a car for one or two weeks, you'd normally do that on the airport side of the island. But I guess I don't know what you guys are like, but then I sort of feel like I have to jump in the car. And, uh, you know, best beach on the island or one of the very best beaches is Castara. So um, people can think about that. OK, super. Thank you very much. Stephen, over to you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Steve and Sarah. Brilliant. Thank you. Well, we are on to our last property. Um, this is, as I said, as I pointed out earlier on, these are these two properties, Star Retreats and Shepherd's Inn, um, were the two properties that I stayed in. Um, and you're going to get uh, Josanne, who's going to give you a nice tour, live tour. Hopefully it's a nice sunny day to give people the good perspective. But uh, let me stop sharing so that um, Sarah can introduce And introduce Josanne. Uh, Josanne, you need to unmute and away you go, Josanne. If, uh, you Hi, good morning. We share? There we go. Okay, great. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Josanne Shepard, and I am happy to welcome you to Shepherds in Tobago. I am just going to flip my screen so you see our property. So here we are at Shepherds in Tobago. I'm going to start and just give you a walkthrough live and yes it is a beautiful sunny day in Tobago it's a lot better than yesterday we did have some rain earlier this morning so as you enter into Shepherds in Tobago you once you look around you're going to see our uh, cabanas or wooden cabanas uh, as you enter to our right we have our restaurant which is called the Betsy's Hope restaurant and to your left as we enter is our reception area which is called Dallas Okay, and once you enter our reception area, you will be greeted by our lovely staff. Today we have Lisa and Julianne with us and also greeted with a lovely welcome drink to refresh you after your journey. All right, so just to give you a little history before we move on further into the property is that our owner, my husband, Colin Shepherd, he's from the village of Delaphone. And what he did when he established or would have refurbished this property five years ago is that he brought his home village of Delaford into the 
city or the town of Crown Point. So as we know, Crown Point is the activities hub, the lively hub of Tobago, where you have all the action. We're two minutes away from the airport. We're three minutes walking distance from Storbay local beach facility, as well as about five minutes drive from the Pigeon Point Heritage Park. And as we go through the property, you're gonna see a lot of elements that is from his local village of Delaford, as I mentioned, our front office or reception area, it's named Dallas. That's one of the areas in Delaford and our restaurant and bar is the Betsy Soap restaurant and the Kings Bay bar and lounge. Okay, so some places may be familiar with the Kings Bay waterfall that's in the village of Delaford. So I'm just gonna give you a brief walkthrough of the restaurant where we serve, uh, mix of local and international cuisine with our local take of it so this is our bar area where you can get your cool refreshing cocktail a glass of wine all right and the restaurant and bar is located poolside all right and at our pool we have somewhat of a replica of the king's bay waterfall again that's located in delaford a lot of persons, when they do come to Tobago, they do rent cars and they take an island trip. You would pass through one of the villages, which is called Delaford, and that is on the Atlantic side of the island. Okay, so just taking you past our pool area. Okay, and surrounding our pool are our cabanas. We have four cabanas in terms of accommodation and each cabana comes with two individual rooms. Okay, so four cabanas. And I am going to take you inside one of the cabanas so you get an idea of what it looks like. Okay, so all our rooms come with Basically, the same amenities, the difference would be the size of the room. So our cabanas are more cozy and intimate, uh, ideal for a couple. Okay. All of our rooms come with air conditioning. We offer Netflix TV. And you can see on the wall, we have a mural that's the Scarlet Ibis, one of the national birds of Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, so I'm going to take you now into our garden area. And just to let you know that um, our owner, Mr. Shepard, he would have stayed true to his heritage in terms of being raised in Delaford. And as he always says, every shepherd has sheep. So certain areas of our hotel are in keeping with that theme. So we just left our pool area. I'm just going to take you back. And our pool is referred to here as our pond. And then we have our garden area that is used for events such as weddings, um, yoga, um, relaxing, even just a picnic while you're here, our garden is referred to as our pasture. Okay, so I'm going to take you to the rooms as we pass by. Each of our rooms, as I mentioned, is named after an area in the village of Delaford. So I'm going to take you into Shore Park. And again, once you're traveling to the village of Delaford, these are some things we ask you to look out for. So you would see Shore Park on your way through Delaford. So I'll take you through. Okay, so in Shore Park, it comes with two single beds again. All rooms again offer same amenities. I'm not sure if you're hearing any birds. We have quite a number of birds that live in our garden. We do have persons who come and are into bird watching. They spend a lot of time in our garden or a pasture again, as we refer to it. And again, where would a shepherd be without little Bo Peep? 
So we have what we refer to as our little bo peep suite. And this is a three bedroom suite, ideal for families, a group of friends. So it comes with three individual bedrooms. It sleeps a, common, a maximum of seven persons. And it has a common sitting area where you can relax and this area is all to yourself. Okay, and the last room that I'm going to show you is a room called Crapo Village. And it's a local area from Delaford where the youngings, as they call it, would go to line. All right, so we are going into Crapo Village. Again, a common theme in all of our rooms, each has an individual or unique mural against the back of the bed. Okay. And as we leave our pasture area, we reconnect with the front of the hotel or the restaurant, the Betty Soap restaurant, as well as Dallas, our reception area. Okay, and just to mention that once you book your stay with us, we do offer complimentary airport shuttles, that's airport transit, sorry, to and from the airport, as well as we offer daily beach shuttles, complimentary to both Store Bay Beach Facility, as well as the Pitch and Point Heritage Park. And this is done twice daily, complimentary to all registered guests. Okay, and one thing I would like to mention um, is that we would have recently attained Green Key certification, which is, so let me just show you, and we've received our Green Key flag. So the Green Key certification, which is the Eco Label for Tourism, and leisure establishments are awarded to us for our um, env environmental, sorry, sustainability practices whereby we've re introduced recycling, um, or water conservation, energy conservation. So we would have recently been awarded Green Key certification. So that's something if you're into recycling, we do encourage our clients or guests staying with us to participate in this venture. Okay, and uh, that's Shepard's in, and I would like to thank you for staying with me to the end and we look forward to welcoming you soon. Josanne, thank you so much. That was absolutely yep. wonderful. And all you're doing is bringing back wonderful memories for me. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sure it is for you, definitely, Steve. Oh, my <laughs> God, I love it. I mean, both you and Steve. I mean, one little thing I will add to both uh, both of your properties, both Steve and Josanne have mentioned their restaurants. Um, and I just want to make the particular point that uh, both of those restaurants are very, very popular with locals. And that, to me, is always a great sign when restaurants are visited by local people, um, it, that's a great sign that uh, the food there is uh, is up to point and uh, and really appreciated. So yeah, absolutely wonderful, and it brings back amazing memories for me. Um, Sarah, questions? We must have some questions, so please. Yeah. Um, the questions. Um, what meal plans do you offer? Okay, so we offer a bed and breakfast. We offer half board as well as all inclusive options. Okay, super. Um, on a night time, do you have a light system um, that illuminates the pathways? Yes, we do have a light system that illuminates all pathways throughout the hotel. It makes it very easy for you to walk and it also enhances the mood. Super. Um, I don't think you will have this, but do you have any tennis courts? No, unfortunately, we don't have a tennis court. Uh, we do have a pool area. Um, that, and there's a gazebo uh, just adjacent to the pool area for relaxing. And then we have our pasture that persons use to have picnics, relax, suntan, and even do some yoga. Brilliant. And how many rooms do you have in total? In total, we have 23 rooms. Okay, super. Thank you very much. Um, I You're think you answered all of the other questions as you were doing the tour around. So thank you. You're welcome. Excellent. I think that's it then. Well, look, um, thank you guys. I'd like to say thank you to, to all 
the, 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 the guests, all our visitors, all our visitors, all our guests, um, Ian and Roy um, from Corbyn's, um, Steve from Castara, and obviously Jazan from Shepherd's Inn. Um, I've just got one little thing to show you guys. I'm just going to share my screen again. Um, and that's a sort of a prelude to the next uh, train that's coming along. So Sarah, uh, we don't have any more questions at all for anyone. We do, but I'm conscious of the fact that it's nearly quarter past now. So we, we, right. I'll send okay. them over to you. Um, right. And yeah. then we can try and follow up afterwards. Let me just share yeah. my screen again and uh, I will show everyone the prelude, prelude or prelium to next week. Uh, next week sorry next month um thank you guys very much for coming along and um yes we will follow up in the next day or so with video content all the videos that you've seen and uh, we'll answer some of those questions which um we haven't been able to come to now this is just a two minute video and uh, i hope you enjoy and thank you guys very very much and nothing happens <laughs> <laughs> what a build up. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Stephen. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Um, we'll send the follow-up and the copy of the recording. Um, it'll be maybe tomorrow now. But thanks for joining, and we will see you all on the next instalment. I presume we're going with an adventure theme then, Stephen. Next time it's going to be an adventure <laughs> theme. Yes, that was a Excellent. good guess. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, all guys. Right. Thanks. Right. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye, bye.